Tak dobrý den, všechny vás vítám na webináři, který jsme nazvali Toximeter pro online hodnocení toxicity. Mé jméno je Matěj Kříž a zastupuji zde jednu ze společností pořádající tento webinář firmu Ekotechnika. Teď dáme šanci těm, kteří se přihlásí o trochu později a já tento čas vyplním krátkým úvodem. Tento webinář spolu pořádají společnosti Ekotechnika a BB Moldajnke, kterou Ekotechnika je česká firma, kterou moji rodiče Hanna a Milan založili před více jak 30 lety. Jsme poradenská a obchodní a servisní firma v oblasti měřící techniky se zaměřením na průmyslové aplikace ekologii. Ekotechnika zastupuje Společnost BB Moldenke v Čechách a na Slovensku bezmála 20 let. Společnost BB Moldenke, BB jako Biological Biophysical Engineering, je německá společnost s více jak 20 letou tradicí. Zabývá se dvěma hlavními oblastmi. Jednak spektrofluorometrie pro analýzu chlorofilu, které umí rozpoznat třídy řaz, synice. A druhou oblastí, o které dnes bude řeč, jsou biologické systémy včasného varování v reálném čase, tedy online toximetry. Zde je BB Moldojenke světovým lídrem. Toliko k představení firm a rád bych trochu zmínil naší motivaci, proč jsme tento webinář uspořádali. My jako ekotechnika se již 15 let snažíme rozšiřovat povědomí o kontinuálních toximetrech. I přesto v rámci kauzy Bečva se z různých reakcí odpovědných osob ukázalo, že povědomí o možnostech kontrolovat toxicitu vod v českých řekách kontinuálně je obecně velmi malá až žádná. I z těch nejvyšších míst jsme mohli slyšet, že se jedná o veskyze vědecké přístroje, které je třeba prověřit testovacím provozem či odzkoušet je v pilotním nasazení. Jakoby to byla novinka, jakoby nebylo známo, že se používají desetiletí všude po světě. No, více o užití a rozšíření toximetrů v Evropě a jiné ve světě bude mluvit kolega Zenke v druhé části našeho webináře. A jak dále postupovala diskuze kolem kauzy Bečva, zdálo se, že v ní chybí návrhy řešení. Iniciovaly se pety. Většina se soustředí na odhalení vyniků, požadují vysvětlení k postupu úřadu a tak dále. Vznikla i například petice Arniky, která už navrhuje svá řešení a snížení ohlašovacích prahů vybraných chemických látek, zpřísnění limitů pro vypouštění či sledování větší škály látek. Ale kontinuálně monitorovat kvalitu vod pomocí laboratorní analýzy stále větší škál látek je z mnoha důvodů při nejmenším problematické. Časnutý na přípravu vzorků, na provedení analýzy, množství látek, jež by měly být monitorovány a v neposlední řadě opakované značné finanční náklady na tyto analýzy. A co když unikne nebo se dokonce záměrně vypustí látka, která není na seznamu? Co když třeba i podlimitní množství jednotlivých látek, které na seznamu sice jsou, ale spolu vytvoří jedovatý koktejl. Toximetry jsou z principu nespecifické, tedy neřeknou vám, o jakou toxickou látku se jedná, ale informují vás vždy a okamžitě, když monitorovaná voda působí na testovací organismy negativní. A je už na nás, jak s touto informací naložíme? Jestli nám bude stačit, že se na přístroji rozsvítí oranžové nebo červené světlo, jako na semaforu, nebo zda spustíme okamžité vzorkování, nebo přes internet alarmujeme všechny, kdo budou mít zájem. Prostě technologie tu jsou a je na nás, aby jsme je využili. Já děkuji, že jste tady s námi na webináři a ještě jednou dobrý den. Zdravím všechny, kteří dorazili teď později. A budu mít pár 
technických poznámek. Poprosím vás, abyste udrželi se kamery vypnuté a mikrofon vstupné. Měli bychom tím nížit požadavky na datový výnos. V prezentacích bude prostor na dotazy. Dotazy nám můžete zasílat již v průběhu prezentací. Prosíme do chatu, ideálně soukromou zprávou. Pokud se budete chtít dotazovat anglicky, ušetří nám to překlad, tak prosím na uživatele BB Moldaňke, tedy na mého kolegu, kolegu Babaka z BB Moldaňke, který nás pak na závěr dotazy provede. A nebo pokud chcete se dotázat česky, posílejte dotazy na mě, uživatel Matěj Kříž Ekotechnika. Kdo má zájem o záznam tohoto webináře, který teďka právě pořizujeme a plánujeme jej pro anglickou část opatřit českými titulky, prosíme o vyplnění formuláře na našem webu ekotechnika.com. Odkaz na formulář zašlu do chatu za okamžik. A rád bych vám teďka představil naše přednášející, naše hosty. Dnešní program má dvě části. Do problematiky nás zasvětí a vývojem od statických laboratorních testů toxicity až po dynamické online stanovení toxicity nás provede pan doktor Detlef Lose. Detlef studoval biochemii na univerzitě v Hanovru a v roce 1986 titul PhD na Dieseldorfské univerzitě. Více než 10 let strávil v základním výzkumu zaměřeném na rostlinnou biochemii. Posledních 20 let Detlef předává své fotosyntetických procesů a pigmentace. Druhou část, zaměřenou na užití a rozšíření toximetrů v Evropě a jinde ve světě, si vzal na starosti pan ředitel BB Moldenke, pan Zenke Kobár. Zenke studoval aplikovanou fyziku na univerzitě v Kýlu. Již více než 20 let se věnuje online měřícím metodám a nástrojům pro kontrolu kvality vody. A v roce 2011 nastoupil do BB Moldenke GmbH kde od roku 2014 působí jako generální ředitel. A to je ode mě všechno na úvod. Teď přepnu do angličtiny. I now give the floor to Detlef. So Detlef, if you are ready, floor is yours. OK. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Matei, for this uh, kind introduction. Um, I have the pleasure to lead you through the first part of our webinar. And uh, here uh, we uh, prepared a presentation. And uh, I would like to give you the title of this presentation. It is a toxicity assessment in water. Jetlef, could you yeah. please uh, bring this uh, presentation yeah. to your right uh, Yeah, I will do this. I will start this now. Um, so. Yes, it is working. Um, we deal here now with toxicity assessment in water. And of course, we want to introduce some parts uh, that are important for the understanding of the toxicity how it is done in the past, how it is done in the present, and what will be in the future. I will talk about the toxicity itself and the toxicity and biomonitoring, which is an essential part of the toxicity recognition. We deal with those response effects, which is important to understand, also in comparison to chemical analysis. And we want to talk about the Daphnia, here the Daphnia Magna, It's a sort of the Daphnids, uh, which can serve as model organisms for toxicity uh, recognition. And now we want to uh, emphasize uh, toxic events and alarm recognition, how this can be performed. It's not um, necessary to have an ideal organism, but you also have to deal to recognize the effect on these organisms. And then we want to show you Uh, the Daphnia toximeter, which is an instrument uh, that uh, is used uh, for the um, for the recognition and automatic 
way to perform the toxicity analysis. And the second part will uh, deal with the applications of the uh, Daphne toxometer, which show you where it is used, who uses it, and uh, uh, what are the best ways uh, to, uh, to introduce this also in new regions and new areas. And this is important also for understanding why these instruments are now distributed worldwide and we can show you uh, in which places they are. And I want to talk you to first uh, to describe and I have to define uh, the toxicity. Um, we deal here with uh, the acute toxicity, but the toxicity describes any harmful effects caused by contact with uh, hazardous substances. And the acute toxicity comprises damaging effects which are visualized within a short time after exposure. And this is in uh, opposite to the chronic effects which we do not deal here with. They are also important. But what we want to show here is how uh, organisms suddenly react on harmful substances. You see it here, for example, as an example of, of uh, fish kills, which from time to time happens when accidents uh, happen and harmful pollution is released to rivers, for example. Why do we need this? Uh, we need this in a very wide way because it affects not only the fish, as you can saw, you could see in the last slide. It also affects uh, the um, uh, soil. Uh, and uh, the, the air, of course, and interesting, I found this picture below here uh, from the sky of Ostrava. But here I want to deal with, uh, with water, water quality, because uh, poor water quality leads to infirmity, to disease, and at the end of death. And you have to know that many people, even in the European Union, die from the quality of, bad, of uh, poor water, of uh, bad water, sorry. Um, <clears throat> what are now? Uh, what is now used for toxicity assessment? Of course, we cannot use human being like here in the center of this slide. Uh, we have um, organisms that uh, serve for us as biomonitors to indicate uh, toxicity, and uh, some of them are shown here. These are, for example, algae. We have here the Daphnia, where we want to talk uh, today about this uh, organism. We have here the fish, which is a very old biomonitor, and uh, this is another type which maybe serve much more for plants, uh, for um, wastewater plants. Uh, this is uh, luminescent bacteria, but uh, all of them have their place in the excessity, excessity of toxins. Uh, <clears throat> the biomonitors they show reaction on harmful compounds, harmful compounds that can be hazardous to human health, for example. And uh, <clears throat> a well-established uh, organism is the Daphnia, and here the Daphnia magna, and you can see here on the left side, uh, it is a usual way how to grow them. This is very simple to put them into a beaker. They show a high reproducibility. They need a little bit of uh, food that is here in this case is algae. Uh, microalgae, and you can easily breed them. I did it as a boy uh, on a shelf uh, in, below the window. So it's, it's very easy to uh, get these cultured. Um, what is then done in, uh, in traditional tests, it is uh, the so-called static test. You see uh, below a picture from this where you have different uh, dilution steps of your sample. And uh, to each dilution, step you add a certain amount of, uh, of this organism, of the Daphnia, and then you look for, for example, for the immobility or for the lethality of the organism. And when you, for example, make a test with a compound and a certain concentration, you can see how the uh, immobility is affected. And you can see here that uh, after a certain concentration of a compound, you will find that there is a total immobility. So that means you have a sample, a water sample, and you check it with the different um, tissue loosen steps. So that means that you will have only one sample that you can investigate at a certain time. 
And the second thing what I have to mention, it takes time. Uh, for example, after 24 hours, 48 hours, or even 96 hours, this uh, test is controlled by visual inspection, which needs a long, long time. Yeah. What are now the advantages of, of this test? Uh, of course, these are established um, test organisms. There are thousands of publications which uh, report uh, the uh, effects of different uh, compounds on these organisms. Uh, they show a high, very high sensitivity, which means that uh, even at low uh, concentration, you find effect on, on uh, the organism. And uh, of course, uh, the higher productivity means that uh, you have a good availability. These, uh, these are easy to breed. You can do this easily if you have the right uh, microalgae and uh, good water quality for the growth. But the disadvantage is on the other side, this is only that you only get one parameter, which is uh, either the uh, organisms die or they are immobile for a certain amount. And uh, you have only this discrete sample from the flow. Uh, that means you take a sample, bring it to the lab and perform the test. And then you will get the result after a certain length of time. But this is a big disadvantage. So you cannot react immediately on this uh, pollution that you get inside of your water. Of course, in between, we have advanced uh, chemical analysis. And uh, of course, this. Uh, uh, analysis is uh, uh, important also for the future, but the, uh, has also some lack um, in so far that you only can detect such substances which you are, you are looking for. You need special analyzers, for example. And of course, you have to also to bring the sample to the laboratory to perform uh, this uh, analysis. And this needs, for example, hours or days or Sometimes uh, the samples are collected, for example, to subject them for HPLC, uh, gas chromatography analysis. So it is uh, also um, costly, time costly, and uh, takes a lot of time. <clears throat> and again, this only is a sample only reflects the situation at a certain time where the sample is sampled. Yeah, that means uh, also a big advantage, although it is always necessary to have such analysis. Another way which is also important is uh, that you can also determine toxicity with a chemical approach. Uh, this is in a nice example where you can see when you look, for example, uh, at the lower curve, you see here uh, the effect, the response effect of the organism um, when you raise the concentration. This is a logarithmic scale, and you see after certain times uh, the uh, curve raises. If you have um, a synergist, uh, that means, for example, a certain cofactor, this can be carbon dioxide, altered uh, pH, and so on, this can enhance dramatic uh, the response. Um, that means uh, that cannot be seen by chemical analysis. It can be only seen by the effect on the organism itself. So that means uh, when you put this all together, usually a compound is not alone in the sample. You will find the surrounding cofactors which can seriously affect uh, the uh, um, uh, reaction and the response of the organism. Many of these things are overcome by the so-called uh, dynamic Daphnia test. And here we want to introduce uh, the uh, Daphnia toxin meter 2, as you can see it here on the left side. It is now an automatized uh, procedure. We have all this included here in uh, uh, instrument. For example, you see that uh, here behind this, uh, there is a chamber where these organisms, the Daphnia, are moving around. And we have a continuous flow through this instrument for uninterrupted time for 24 hours, seven days a week, um, unmanned, and we found here now a real-time toxicity assessment. So that means the organisms are always observed inside of the chamber, and this is monitored here uh, on the screen. And we have also a software and an automatic alarm recognition 
which uh, is performed all the time. And the alarm is also evaluated, for example, for statistics. Um, of course, this needs some adaption uh, with a superior system. And therefore, this is not only a standalone instrument, but it can be easily integrated into a bigger network. And uh, one thing which is also important to mention, that we have here a hardware supervision that uh, excludes fail alarms. So that, for example, if the temperature is too high or we have a stop in the flow, it will not give an alarm uh, as a real alarm, but it will tell you that there's something wrong with the hardware. And now how this is done, and this is uh, really uh, really too superior for that, what we compare to the static test, we have uh, the observation by a CCD camera of the movements of the organisms all the time. What, uh, what we follow up is, for example, we have the speed of the organisms and the distribution inside of the chamber. We have the moving, that which what we call here fractal dimensions, which is the curviness and the angel of the movings. I uh, will show you in a later short video. We have also group uh, social uh, behavior, distance and grouping, and we have the swimming height. And last not least, we have also the number of the active daphnia swimming around, which resembles uh, the uh, number of uh, mobile or immobile uh, daphnia in the static text. And all of these parameters are put together and form the so-called toxic index, which decides about the situation if it's a green or yellow or red situation, which is an alarm situation. And this is shown here in this slide. You see here that toxic substances in the water flow, they change the organism's behavior. It becomes extraordinary. And this means that uh, the parameters analyze and it puts uh, points of toxicity uh, to a list. And when it uh, supersedes a certain alarm, uh, threshold, then it will uh, switch uh, to a so-called red situation where you see that that's a traffic light which turns to red. Well, and then the biomonitor gives an alarm uh, outside, for example, over um, networking. Uh, and uh, that is what uh, is the principle behind all the other time when this uh, instrument is working um, with a good water quality, it shows a traffic light, which is green. And I will show you here at the end of my last slide something what you can see on the screen. You have here on the left, uh, the, this is a picture, uh, a photograph on, of the Daphnia. And here in the middle, you see the tracks of the Daphnia, um, what they have done in the past during the uh, last minute. And here on this uh, side, you see the traffic light which illustrates that the quality is quite good. And below, you see here the toxic index, which means everything is green, no um, uh, factors which show that there are toxic, in, uh, toxic substances inside of the water. Uh, I can illustrate this a little bit better. For example, when I do this um, picture, sorry, this is not that what I want to show you. Now it comes. Yeah, this is a, a screenshot of the moving Daphnia of the sea on the left side. And then you have here the tracks in the middle. You see that are completed. And we have here now the measurements. And here on the right side, uh, there are the different parameters that you see and the yeah, result in this uh, toxic index. And here you see a, a certain amount of toxicity in the number, for example, and uh, some of this which forms the toxic index. And at the end, uh, I can show you that we have also this information about uh, the process. For example, we can follow up what is going on with the heating, what is going on with the temperature, what is going on with the, with the pumps and so on, and the progress. And this illustrates that you will have the uh, the perfect control all, all, all the time when you perform this measurement. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. This was very theoretical, I know, but uh, we want to go a little bit more in the practice. And I thank you very much for the first moment. And uh, of course, uh, I will be available for questions.
<coughs> Thank you very much, Detlef. Sönke, maybe you can. Yes. <coughs> Good afternoon from my side and thank you very much for uh, your participation here at our webinar this afternoon. After Detlef has explained the principles of the Daphne toximeter, the dynamic Daphne test, I would like to give you an overview about the application and also about the distribution of the toximeters. So in my first part, I would like to explain um, where are the established applications of toximeters? So, and I will show you a kind of circle. In the first um, step, and this is a major group of, uh, of, uh, of the users, it's uh, environmental monitoring, APAs, uh, environmental monitoring authorities all around the world. And here I've just given an example as a reference. Um, this is the Institute for Hygiene and Environment, Hamburg. In the end, it's the EPA in Hamburg who are operating since decades in um, a, a network of monitoring station in the area of city Hamburg. So after the environmental monitoring authorities, the next big user group of toximeters are waterworks. Of course, uh, especially if the waterworks are um, using surface water, to uh, process their drinking water. And um, we have users who continuously control the quality of the raw water they are taking from the rivers or from dams. And here's also an example of a user. It's uh, the waterworks in Constance, in Lake Constance here in Germany. Um, in this um, uh, in this stage, I would like to, to mention that uh, we have a lot of references uh, of toximeter users, but in, in a majority of the cases, uh, our users want to keep it uh, confidential. So we are not allowed to name them. The names I show here during this presentation, of course, uh, it's allowed and we are free uh, to communicate that these are users of the toximeters. So after the environmental monitoring, uh, authorities after the waterworks, also industrial um, applications we have. I call it here a food industry, and you see there are two um, brands. It's a German beer, Warsteiner, and of course an international group, Heineken, um, who use the toximeter to control the quality of the very important raw material water uh, for their product. And um, I think like in Germany, also in the Czech Republic, um, beer is kind of liquid bread, so uh, I sort it to food industry. So after food industry, we have users in the area of wastewater treatment plants. You see, I put here the red check box in brackets um, because it's more or less, it's a newer application. In some areas of the world, it's extensively used. I will show you later a short example from uh, South Korea, uh, where wastewater treatment plants are forced by law to monitor continuously um, the quality of the effluent. And the reason is quite obviously because in the end, uh, the wastewater, the treated wastewater will be released again to the surface waters and then we are back to the river system, for instance. So let's have a look at environmental monitoring authorities, the first application um, here again. As an example, the EPA Hamburg, you see on the right hand side, this is the control room in the central department of the EPA. And you see here a map of city Hamburg, uh, where you see here in the red dots, uh, the locations of the measuring stations. In total, there are nine stations in operation uh, along uh, the Elbe River and some tributaries uh, in four of the stations, um, they use the advanced monitoring program uh, where they also applied besides some basic uh, parameters, uh, the toximeters to identify uh, toxic events. And this is of course the main purpose. Um, here I would like to show you a very short video, it's 30 seconds, um, an impression about the inside of a 
container. In this case, it's a big container where they have installed a couple of online monitoring devices. And here in the in the front, you see the Daphne toximeter. But I will just start the video so that you have an impression about the uh, measuring container from the EPA Hamburg. So yeah, here you see the Daphne toximeter. In this case, it has two chambers. Um, Detlef showed in his presentation one with one chamber. With the two chambers, you have a cross and double check in a more redundant um, alarm system, um, because in this case, both chambers are evaluated by the software independently. So, and here, yeah, this is the screen. Detlef has shown the video. Um, this is the view uh, to the user. But it's normally operated uh, automatically. Uh, nobody is be there at site. From time to time, there are people from the authority to maintain what is required to maintain. Oh, so, yeah, and this... Uh, here you see uh, the different sum of the parameters that to Daphne toximeter is continuously measuring. Uh, so the behavior and movement parameters from the Daphne and the little chamber. And uh, yeah, the purpose is to get uh, an, an early stage uh, a system warning if there's some harmful substances released in the water. And then you see here, as Detlef explained, then the toxicity index um, reached a threshold and if the threshold is reached then uh, the, DAF, uh, the the toximeter indicates its alarm situation yeah and the purpose of course it's obviously so um, another application um, in the field of environmental monitoring is uh, a measuring station in, at the Rhine River. Uh, here you see it's in a, in a modern building beside a wet, very old bridge that it goes over the Rhine River. But you see also a little bit the, the, one of the purposes of this station because uh, upstream you have here the industrial site from BISF and it's uh, the biggest industrial site in Europe uh, with a lot of production facilities and an own wastewater treatment plant and before BSF releases the water to the, uh, the, the Rhine River um, they treat it of course and then a few kilometers up, uh, downstream um, there is located this measuring station uh, that uh, expressly also um, is installed at that place to measure the quality uh, of the Rhine River that was uh, is close to the effluent of a big industrial wastewater treatment plant. So it's a kind of mixture. It's an indirect, indirect um, monitoring of the wastewater, and of course, generally, it's uh, a station that continuously measures the quality of the Rhine River. So here it's a short view inside uh, the monitoring station. Um, as the Rhine River is very broad at that area, uh, they operate more than one system. Uh, they extract sample from the one side of the Rhine and also from the other side of the Rhine so that they have a better view about what's uh, coming along um, in the entire uh, Rhine River. Yeah, and here you see one of our long-term users. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Peter Diehl, uh, who's since years operating um, the toximeters. So now I come to the next application from environmental monitoring authorities to the waterworks. Um, as I said in, in the first slide, uh, this is one example. It's uh, bus, uh, waterworks in Constance and Lake Constance. And they're also since uh, years operating uh, the toximeter to, to have uh, immediately uh, an information if there's something wrong with the raw water they are extracting from the lake constant. So then I come to the next uh, next stage. It's food industry. As I said, uh, I have here 
two breweries where I'm allowed to name them. Uh, one is a brewery here in Germany. It's still a family-owned brewery. Um, they are located there in a very, very beautiful area, and they have uh, their own water resource. So that's the reason why this brewery is located there, because the water resources there are very suitable uh, for the production of beer. And uh, years ago, they had an accident with, uh, with, that was a van, with uh, a truck with harmful substances, uh, in the end, nothing has happened, but the people in charge, they thought about how to handle such kind of risk. So they decided to operate uh, a toximeter. So and on the right-hand side, you see here a reference letter. It was very nice when we received this. It's a production site from Heineken in, in Brazil. And this production site, they're using river water um, and extract the river water for the production process. And uh, for the same reasons, how to handle uh, a potential risk, uh, how can we get aware in a very early stage that there's something uh, harmful in our water resources yeah and there and this is also what i want to express with this um so uh it, it, a brewery is an industrial site the main purpose is to produ produce the beer and uh we have during the years we have uh, developed the toximeters in that way that we uh, our aim was to reduce the the requirement of maintenance and uh also, the industrial side is able to operate uh, a, a toximeter, so the maintenance requirement is reduced as much as possible. So then I will come to the fourth stage of application, the, the wastewater treatment plants itself. Here you see the wastewater treatment plant close to our premises in Kiel. Um, it's a, a middle or big sized wastewater treatment plants and, and the effluent, they also operate a, a Daphnia toximeter uh, to be sure that what they are releasing back to the nature, in this case, the Baltic Sea, uh, that they are sure it has a high quality. And uh, when we installed this, uh, it was five years ago um, the operator and we we were very uh, happy to see that the Daphne toximeter under normal um, conditions is able to be operated at the effluent of the wastewater it means uh, in a good operated wastewater treatment plant the treated water will have close quality like drinking water because as Detlef said the Daphne are very sensitive to a broad range of toxic substances and here you see again some time series um, of the different parameters and here you see the toxicity index it's really low uh, so it's far beyond the the uh, alarm uh, thresholds so but during the operation they had a problem and i'm allowed to show this um there was suddenly an increase of the toxicity index uh, the active organism reduces there were changes in the in the and the, um, the velocity of the movements and it carried out in the end that was indeed it was a misoperation of the wastewater treatment plant uh, in this particular case they have overdosed for some reason um, the flocculation substance they use in their flocculation process in this case it was a uh, ferrous sulfate and uh, so it was too much ferrous sulfate used in the plant and the Daphnia at the uh, at the effluent of the wastewater treatment plant identified that there is something wrong. It was not that serious in the end for the nature but the operators uh, were very glad and happy that they saw this and uh, noticed this in a very early stage. So as a very short view to ab abroad um, this um, is our numbers from uh, South Korea. Once I had here a delegation from South Korea, they were from the Korean Environmental Corporation. It's the, uh, the national uh, authority of environment in Korea. And as I mentioned very short at the beginning, 
by law, the big wastewater um, uh, producers, they are forced to monitor continuously the quality of the effluent. So normally they are forced to measure five parameters like total nitrogen, total phosphorus, um, uh, chemical oxygen demand, suspended solids, and pH. So these are the standard fives every uh, of these big plants have to monitor continuously. And in that area where the wastewater treatment plants release their water close to drinking water extraction, they are also forced to use biomonitors to see also in a very early stage if there are some harmful um, substances released from a wastewater treatment plant. Yeah, and you see it's in total 1,000 uh, 1, wastewater treatment plants uh, forced to measure online the quality of the discharge and um, it, it approximately 60 or 70 also forced to use uh, biomonitors to control the effluent. Yeah, short view about application at uh, the distribution after I have shown some examples of application. Um, yeah, you see here uh, uh, Germany, Europe, and the, the countries where toximeters are in use. And of course, um, the main applications here, it's uh, environmental monitoring, uh, where they monitor in different stations along the big rivers, like the Elbe River, the Danube River, the Rhine River, and the Meuse River in, in Belgium and the Netherlands. So when we have a look in the world, um, you see here, we have uh, now more than 300 toximeters installed worldwide, um, the majority here in Europe, uh, but also in Asia with a, with a, a big market in South Korea, we have installed 130 and in uh, US America 26 and in other countries uh, 16. So in total more than 300. Um, I would like to express with this um, that the toximeters are commonly in use. Of course, it's, it's a kind of niche market application, um, but with uh, more than 300 installed worldwide, we have uh, a lot of experience together with our uh, users and customers. Yeah, and with this, I would like to end my uh, speech and I thank you again for your, uh, your attention. And yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. We will be happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Sanke. Nice presentation. Um, actually, we have lots of questions, to be honest, but I think that we have uh, close to uh, one quarter of um, 15 minutes to finish our journey. So what I will try to select some of these questions. Um, the first question, uh, it has two parts. First part, I would like to uh, ask from Detlef, Dr. Löse. Um, would you please uh, tell us a little bit more about identity or this behavior of Daphnia? The question comes from this point that, uh, for example, is it like this that when the Daphnia swimming slowly, it means pesticides, or in the other hand, if they're swimming quickly, it means heavy metals? Can we distinguish different uh, toxins uh, with the <coughs> Daphnia behavior, or it is something else? Yeah, that is an interesting question. Um, um, but the answer is not that, not that, not that easy. Um, Okay, you can probably uh, sometimes um, visualize that they have uh, certain patterns. For example, um, when we have uh, very high ionic strength inside of the water, it leads, for example, to uh, something like uh, a tumbling of uh, the movement. But it's to relate it uh, to a certain sort of compound that is not possible because it can, it is too variable. Um, the organism in, in, in wholesome um, illustrates or um, reflects uh, the toxic effects. Uh, you, you may imagine that uh, this is much better than that what we can say when we can sort it to a different sort of compounds. Let's imagine, for example, heavy metals. <clears throat> you know, heavy metals can be very harmful but sometimes they are not harmful. For example, when they are combined, it's uh, such called chelators. 
they cannot uh, exhibit their toxicity to the organism because this uh, Active groups inside or the active centers, they are deactivated. That means that at this moment they are not that toxic uh, in the sense of acute toxicity, or that they can bring out uh, chronic effects. But here we focus on acute toxicity. Therefore, um, the answer is quite clear. Um, sometimes it can be related, but it is not a, a real good tool uh, to determine certain compounds. So therefore, it is also, and, and this may also be an answer for its extended question, it can also not reflect the concentration of the compound itself. Yeah? That means that uh, you will not get a clear answer how much it is inside. When I showed you the first slide of the static test, you could see that there is a quite good relation between the concentration and the immobility. So therefore, uh, this is quite easy to maintain when you have only um, a reagent in the presence of this Daphnia. But in the circumstances uh, where you have a complex mixture, if you usually can expect in under natural conditions, you will not find uh, such a way of uh, uh, determination. So therefore, so clearly, to say, clearly to say uh, it is not related, uh, but the advantage is it shows the toxicity. Yeah, we cannot distinguish different uh, uh, toxic toxins, but we can detect the toxicity itself, acute toxicity. Yeah, and the second part of the question I would like uh, to ask from you again, the, um, Dr. Lose. Um, the question is that uh, what is the influence of uh, various climate condition like uh, sewer freezing or other uh, impacts of this uh, uh, very condition on the Daphnia? Perhaps the question comes from the monitoring stations or how? what is the limitation of Daphnia, uh, operating Daphnia? Yeah, well, um, uh, this is also an important uh, question. We... Uh, we solved uh, within the Daphnia toximeter because uh, sample water is uh, prepared. That means that it is brought to a certain temperature and uh, the chamber where the Daphnia are swimming is well temperatured at a constant um, temperature, usually at 20 de degrees Celsius, where the organism feels quite well. So that means <clears throat> this uh, water even if it is a um, low water sample from the river, for example, or it is a, a water which is too hot, then it uh, has to be temperatured to, to, to get a um, good quality temperature for the survival of this organism. So this does not affect uh, the organism. What is important uh, to know is another point uh, where which we have to deal with is, uh, for example, that the organism needs a certain amount of oxygen. So that means that they should have at least uh, two to four milligram per liter of oxygen. Uh, otherwise, they will, will be harmed for it. But this is something which is uh, usually also measured in a measuring station, for example, when they have other sensors like pH, um, conductivity, O2 sensors, and so on and so on. But this is also something which is, uh, has to be taken into consideration, of course. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, but the second part, uh, the, the, the second question has two parts. First part, I will ask from Mr. Kritz and Mate, and the second part from uh, Mr. Kobar. So uh, I would like to ask that, um, do you know which device is planned from Mate? Do you know which device is planned to be installed on the river Bechwa and when this could be done? At Mate? Uh, okay, uh, I will answer and check if it's okay. No, please, please. Uh, we will enjoy it. My bohužel, no, asi vás trochu zklamu, my informace o to máme asi stejné jako vy, to znamená z médií. Nás v této věci zatím nikdo nekontaktoval, takže to je v podstatě stručná odpověď. Yeah. I, I already answered it. Oh, we, got, we, got, we got all, we, all, all information, we got only from media, nobody contacted oh, us nice. in this case, so... Yeah, so 
Yes. But then let me ask the second part of question from um, uh, Mr. Kobar. Um, um, it is discussed that it might be used a continuous monitoring in water or you know, river itself. But some question comes that maybe it would be better to install it in the outlet of any sort of plants that they are producing point uh, pollutions into the river. What is your idea based on the applications you showed us? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, this is why I, I picked up this uh, example from South Korea. But this is exception. This is really exception. I haven't met it in other parts in that world that strictly like in South Korea. Um, but from my opinion, if you re remember the circle I have shown in the, on the first slide, everything belongs together. And if there's a high risk uh, in the affluent of a, tip, of a big industrial area, uh, just yet now from environmental views of thinking, I think it would be good to go at that sp specific spot. Um, but I'm, I, I have doubts that this will be commonly dis distributed in entire Europe. So in, here in Europe, Europe, it's more kind of um, self-responsibility and the thinking. And of course, I also like that. So, but um, the, the operation of monitoring uh, uh, stations along the rivers, I think this is a very good kind of compromise. Yeah. So, and as I also have shown this example here in Germany at the Rhine River, um, definitely the location of this uh, measuring station was selected because of this very nearby big, huge industrial area. Okay, and would you mind if I ask it, because we have time now, we can ask another question. Um, how large streams or rivers can be taximeter be used? Recommended flow range we have, or um, is there any uh, sort of um, instruction in this regard that which big, how big should be the river that we install online taximeter? Do you have any idea about this? Sikobar? No, let the dead left, please. Let that. Uh, oh, dead left. Okay. Yeah. Well, 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 in, in, in principle, is also the question what you want to survey. Uh, it can be a very small river, but it can be a very big uh, river. Uh, I think uh, the best recommendation is where you see a potential of hazard. Uh, this should be a place where you uh, should apply such a toximeter. And uh, uh, of course, uh, we know that in, in um, people got more and more aware of this, and uh, in US America, for example, it is quite usual to ask uh, everyone who participate in such a monitoring, for example, by visual inspection. But I think this cannot be done um, automatically at uh, 24 hours or seven days a week, uh, where you see there might be a risk, it is recommended to apply such an, an instrument. And it can be a, a short outlet of this, or it can be a large outlet of this. It can be also inside of a factory where, for example, you produce uh, water, cooling water, for example, that could be affected by harmful compounds and can be released in, in open waters. So therefore, it depends uh, really on the place uh, where you want to survey this. Uh, we recommend in this way that uh, someone who wants to uh, or considers uh, such an application uh, may contact us because uh, the installation and the adjustment uh, of such a toximeter really depends on the site where it should be installed. Uh, we have our engineers that can support you and give you advice for all of the situations. And uh, so you can expect from the uh, size of the instrument and from the um, um, parts which are inside, it is a little bit more complicated and it needs, of course, some adjustments from our side and needs also some skills uh, from the operator to um, get the full information. And this means uh, ask us first and we will collaborate with you about a, a certain place of installation. Thank you very much. But I would take this opportunity to ask the second question from Dr. Lose. Uh, would you tell us a little bit more about uh, the maintenance of these devices? How difficult are the, the operation or do we need mm -hmm. any special skill requirement? How about the time consuming? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, uh, frankly said, of course, it needs uh, some time. Yeah, it needs uh, some time. Um, you have to consider two things. Uh, the first thing is, as I told you, is uh, uh, the availability of the organism. You have to breed them. Um, that is not uh, that difficult, but you have also to maintain a certain temperature, for example, uh, to keep them well. Uh, this takes some time. Um, and you need uh, also someone who is um, a, a good skilled operator. This takes also some time. Uh, in the beginning of uh, such an instrument, we closely collaborate with such operators uh, to uh, teach them and uh, to, um, uh, to bring it into a smooth uh, operation. This means at the, more, at the beginning, it is some more work. Uh, when it is uh, already introduced and is uh, operating under normal conditions, when one can say this takes, let's say, two hours um, per week uh, to maintain the instrument and maybe another hour for the um, breeding of the instrument. If you have a two-chamber system, that means two chambers where uh, the duff gas swimming, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, but that is all what you have. Open uh, or clearly said in the beginning need some more time and uh, what is but what is more important is uh, what what we recommend uh, that we should have when we install such an instrument a responsible person responsible for this uh, toximeter um, uh, where we can know that this person will be also. Uh, quite often at the place and uh, perform the service and maintenance and uh, such a person will learn quickly how to use and how to operate the system. That is what we can recommend. Yeah? And so <laughs> at the end, I think uh, when it is uh, operating after a certain while, it works uh, mainly unmanned. That means once a week someone goes up there cleans uh, the tubes and replaces some, replaces the, the Daphne, which lives there inside of this chamber for around about one week. Yeah? And then they have to be exchanged. That's all you have to do. Yeah, thank you very much, Detlef. But the last question, because we are, are going to yeah, our limitation of time. So from Mate, and uh, the question is that, uh, um, are there any uh, units or any Daphne taximeter or devices related to taximeters is already in use in Czech Republic? And okay, okay. Uh, I will also answer in Czech, okay? So, dva uh, taximetry vlastní výzkumný ústav vodohospodářský, který úspěšně provozuje více jak 15 let s velmi s velmi zajímavými výsledky. To je asi všechno. Výzkumný ústav hospodářský. Čerstv je v České republice ještě jeden, ale tam nemám souhlas zatím souhlas se zveřejněním. That's all. Yeah. OK. Um, thank you very much. I guess that our journey finishes here and I wish that you enjoyed and you it was helpful, so I would like to give to the Mate to say the last word and say goodbye to everybody in your language. So from our point of view, thank you very much. And thank you time. for your attention. Yeah, thank you. So, so I would like to warmly thanks to colleagues from BBA Moldanke. Thank you very much. And děkuji vám všem za účast, za váš zájem. Uh, věřím, že budeme dále ve spojení a Otázky, které nebyly zodpovězeny teď během online vysílání, zařadíme do našeho blogového zápisu, který zveřejníme na našich webových stránkách a budeme vás dále informovat o vývoji toximetru v České republice. Takže děkuji vám všem. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye.